Welcome to the second video in our PixHawk 2.1 series. Now the idea with this series is that in the first four or five videos you'll be able to get your PixHawk into a fixed wing and flying. And then after that we can add the extra bits and pieces that subscribers are asking for. So in this video we're going to do a couple of things. First of all we're going to talk about why PixHawk 2.1. This is a relatively expensive setup at the moment just like when the original PixHawk and APMs came out before all the clones flooded the market. This setup has a little bit of a price premium, but there's a reason for that, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Then we'll look at the resources, and we'll look at the little manual thing that you actually get with the PixHawk 2.1. There's a place called ardupilot.org, which is a fantastic repository for everything you ever wanted to know about the technology and the software that runs on this little guy. Then we'll have a very quick look at what comes in the boxes. So as you can see, we have lots of different cables and pieces here. I've connected the PixHawk 2.1 up to the GPS, the buzzer, and also the power system as well. And this is what we're going to install into our mini Talon, but we'll do that in the next video. And then finally, we'll just plug this little guy into Mission Planner, and before we do anything else, we'll make sure that we can flash it with the latest and greatest version of the software. That should be more than enough for this video, and the next one we can then put it inside the plane and then start going through the calibration and setup routines to make sure it's all going to be ready to have a test flight. So the first thing we'll talk about then is why PixHawk 2.1. Now PixHawk 2.1 is the latest and greatest version of this. I've talked about this a little bit more in our flight controller comparison video from June 2017. And what we did there is we talked about the fact that the APM platform, which is where all this stuff kind of started, is really starting to get very long in the tooth now. The cool thing is, is that everything I'm about to go through in this series, although it's designed for PixHawk 2.1, is still very, very relevant for PixHawk as well. Now, PixHawk is still available as a clone flight controller, and that's part of the reason why PixHawk 2.1 is about. Again, it was originally created as the flight controller for the 3DR Solar drone, and the developers then took that, improved it, tweaked it a little bit, and then we have the PixHawk 2.1. So the software, how you set it up, the routine, regardless of whether you're using a clone PixHawk board or a genuine PixHawk 2 is going to be the same. But the difference really is for those pilots that have very large models or very expensive camera video equipment suspended from them, for those pilots that are looking for peace of mind that don't want to trust all that to a clone flight controller, then the PixHawk 2.1 provides that kind of ultimate level of security. So even if you haven't got the money to go and buy a PixHawk 1 today, don't worry about it, you can follow along with this and through this series you should also get an idea of how to install a standard PixHawk into your plane. Now alongside this little manual, now this manual is actually really good, I'm quite impressed with it. It actually is more useful than a lot of the very six, big six, seven, eight page manuals than you get with some of the less capable flight controllers. It gives you all the information that you need to know and it gives you all the links to the places that you need to go to get the rest ardupilot.org by far and away is the best place to go for all of this technology for the documentation and the really cool thing is here is it steps you through how to set up everything so ardu plane so there's lots of different ardus available so the ardu pilot family so there's ardu plane which we'll use ardu copter for multi rotors there's ardu rover which will work for things like uh, ground based vehicles boats things like that as well there's lots of different versions and the way it's laid out is that once you uh, navigate to the ardu version that you're looking at along the left hand side there is really really detailed instructions and we are going to be following these instructions for our do plane setup as I go through the series and put this together so if you want to get ahead of the series and you have your own PixHawk then this is the place to go and follow it through it's well written enough that actually you can get away with just sitting and working your way through it without getting too stuck the other thing we're going to need to do is download and install some Mission Planner software 
onto our computer. Now the two it mentions in the manual, the first one is called Mission Planner which I will be using. It's a Windows only technology. We've used Mission Planner loads on the channel already. We used it with the original APMs, with the APM 3.1, the little mini version. We've used it with the PixHawk, the Pix Racer, and now we'll be using it with the PixHawk 2. Now there was a bit of a schism and a break between the developers a while ago and some of them went off and there's a now a couple of other versions of technology available. There's one called Q Ground Control. Uh, that is available for a lot more than Windows. So if you're a Mac user, Linux, or an Apple user, or even an Android user, then you can have a look at Q Ground Control. That's probably going to be more useful if you want to have an Android tablet at the field to control and manage the vehicle as it's flying around. And then we have APM Planner as well, which again supports Windows, Macs, OS Xs, and Linux. I'll put links in the description so you can go and have a look at each of those but I'm going to go in with good old Mission Planner and Windows here and I have a lot of faith in Mission Planner it's always worked for me as well as that information, don't forget, because we've already done a lot of setups with Mission Planner on all those boards that I've just talked about, there are series for them. So again, if you're interested in this technology, but you don't want to go to the PixHawk 2.1, then you can go and have a look at those series. We do the setups. Be aware that those series are kind of 18 months out of date. Uh, the only ones you really need to be worried about are the APM ones, the APM technology, the support for that stopped a good year and a half ago so uh, these days I'd recommend go for a PixHawk platform if you want the kind of levels of performance and control that we're going to talk about in this series. A couple of other places that are quite handy, GitHub's nice. In GitHub you can see all the information about what's going on with each of these projects, you can see how the development's going. If you've used GitHub at all, uh, it's a nice way to just keep an eye on what's going on with your favorite open source software. And the last thing I'll talk about is all of the stuff that we're talking about in here is open source technology. It doesn't cost you anything to download and use things like Mission Planner or Q Ground Control, APM Planner, the Ardu Pilot stuff. It all is available to us as pilots for free. If you are using the technology and you're liking it and it's giving you joy and you know, having fun, then take the time to hit the donate button. There's usually a donate button somewhere around on the page. It just helps make sure that the developers get a little bit of something for the time and effort they're putting in to develop this technology for us, and it means that they'll continue to do it and will continue to get that benefit. So let's look a little bit closer at this setup guide. So the setup guide itself, the main thing on here that I'm really impressed about is this diagram that talks about how you connect everything together. So let me just put the slide up here and we'll briefly go through it. So the connections for the PixHawk 2 are really straightforward. All we're going to do is connect the GPS and external compass. There's also an arming switch that's part of the compass as well. That's going to plug directly into GPS one, that's a slightly bigger connection because it has the connection for the safety button as well. In this diagram, the GPS and safety button are slightly different. Uh, we'll look at the cables in a minute because you also get a cable if you're not using this super duper GPS version that I have here. Next thing, bottom right hand corner, is the connection for the XT60 power bits and pieces. That's plugging into the Power One connector. So that little device is not only measuring the voltage of the flight battery, the current that it has been consumed, but it's also going to power the PixHawk 2 as well. The bottom of the screen, this is the layout, of course, for a quadcopter. This is how you're going to connect everything. I'll talk a little bit more about the connections for a plane in a minute, but those first four connections, one, two, three, four on the mains out, are kind of for the aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. So we'll cover that in the next video. And then in the middle of the left-hand side, you have the buzzer that plugs into the USB connector, which is very confusing, but that's where it goes. Uh, buzzers are very handy. It gives you confirmation of things that are changing. Also uh, helps you find the model if it comes down on the far side of a fence, you know where you need to clamber over to pick it up. And then the last one is in the top left-hand corner, we have the telemetry radios. Now, I will be playing with telemetry radios later on in the series. Initially, we'll do everything with USB. 
So if we go back to the desk, here it is all plugged in. So that's how we've got it set up. And you can see that it's pretty straightforward. I'm just not gonna be too tricky for me to get this little guy into the model. Now, the only other thing that we've got are lots and lots of cables. Uh, this is all stuff that you get in the kit. So we have a cable to connect pretty much everything. There's the cable for that GPS connection. If you uh, don't have a super duper GPS like we've got here, you've got a standard one with the two connections, a four pin for the external compass and a six pin for the GPS. And you've also got the arming button as well. So there's that one. And you have all these other ones for the different power connections. And this long thin bit here is actually so you can connect lots of different CAN bus pieces together and if you uh, want more than just two connections. A couple of things to mention on the Pixel 2. You'll notice that there are multiple telemetry connections. We're going to probably use one of those telemetry connections either for the radios and another one, we have a separate cable here. This is something that doesn't come with a kit. That's an extra thing you have to buy, but this is the telemetry cable for the FR Sky system. So you can plug all of this information and get it sent back if you're using OpenTX 2.2 back to your radio and using a special Lua script, be able to view loads and loads of really good information on your radio as you're flying almost like a kind of a mini ground station or a mini version of Mission Planner actually running on your radio. So that's a really nice idea and that's one I'm going to be using. Okay, so now we've done all that, let's plug this little guy into the computer. I'm gonna unplug the GPS and everything else for now. I like to always test the flight controller is happy and will accept a flash and update of the firmware before I start putting things inside models. That way, if there is a problem and I can't flash it or there's an issue, I can get in touch with a vendor and potentially return the item without having to worry about the vendor then accusing me of breaking it by soldering or clipping wires or the way I've mounted it. So let's jump onto the computer. Let's talk about Mission Planner for a second and then let's plug our little Pixhawk 2.1 in and flash it with Ardu Play. So here we are running the latest and greatest version of Mission Planner. At the moment, a time of recording, it's 1.3.48. Now to download Mission Planner, the easiest thing to do is go to rdupilot.org. The download link is on there. Just download it and install it. It might ask you to do an update of the .NET framework. It'll give you a link as part of the installation. What I'll do though is I'll put a link uh, to that in the description and if you find you have that error you can manually update that .NET framework as well once you've done that everything will work perfectly now if we go to the bench here is the little Pixhawk 2 I genuinely haven't plugged this in for the first time yet so we're doing it live on camera which is always a little exciting I've got the USB cable plugged into the computer but nothing else so let's plug this little guy in and see what happens. Now the USB connection that we need is this one on the side. These other two down here are only really used when you have an Edison capable carrier with an Intel Edison inside. Again, we talked about that briefly. The Intel Edison is kind of a companion computer that sits in the Edison capable carrier and can provide additional functionality like collision avoidance and some extra pieces too. Now for basic flying and for some of the more advanced features actually it's all handled by the Pixhawk 2. You don't need the Edison carrier but if you have the Edison carrier and you've got other USB cables at the side don't worry about that. The one you're after to flash and set this guy up is going to be this one. So let's plug it in for the first time. It's going to install a driver by the look of it. That's fine. Okay, so COM9 looks like the one we're after. That looks more promising. Now, is it going to have any firmware on it from day one? It actually has. Fantastic, there it is. So if I move the nose up, we should see the uh, artificial horizon move. That looks really, really happy. So let's just go into the setup. Uh, so at the moment it's come pre-flashed for a quadcopter, that's fine, doesn't really matter. What we're going to do is we'll go and install some firmware. So let's disconnect first of all. 
then we can pick the kind of firmware that we're after. Now, lots and lots of options, we've already talked about this thing. Uh, I'll do Rover, I'll do Copter, I'll do Plane, there's an Antenna Tracker as well, there's all these wonderful bits and pieces. Now we are going to go for RD Plane, so we'll click Yes. It's going to download from the internet. No lights on the Pixhawk at all at the moment, it's very, very quiet. I'm not going to speed this up unless uh, there's something, unless we have a lot of things that aren't happening at once. So this is how quickly it's doing it. So this is a lot faster than some of the others that I've played with recently. So you can see we've got lots and lots of flashing lights underneath. Sounds like it's redone. Okay, let's connect again. Here come the params. Let's go into mandatory hardware. Oh, this looks promising, actually. This looks promising. Let's make sure we can still still moves properly, which it does. Great, 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 great. Okay, so let's just go into initial setup. Uh, now normally it's going to try and run this wizard on you every single time we set up. We are going to go through the wizard again. Uh, I like the fact that the um, there's a nice green pulsing light here in the flight controller. That means uh, green is usually very good. Uh, with the wizard, we are going to go through the wizard and the wizard is a great way to set it up. Um, one of the things I really like about this, but I'm going to go through the wizard once this little guy is installed in the plane and we'll do that next time. So let me just cancel out of that. But I would say at the moment that that looks very promising. The only thing I mentioned in here while we're looking at this stuff, if we go into help, um, you can enable to show the console window. By default, it's not really available. Um, I would always uh, turn it on and restart it, and I'll do that before the next video. Having the console window available there is blooming handy, because some of the stuff that you want to do is easier on the command line than kind of trying to navigate all this gubbins up here. So if you are running Mission Planner and you can't find it, go into Help, it's down here, you click it and restart it, and then you'll get the CLI window as well. Okay, so now we know this little guy is happy, and uh, we are ready for the next couple of steps. In the next video, we'll look at putting this guy in the plane, we'll connect all these pieces up, and then the next time we connect it up to the computer, we'll actually be going through that wizard. So join me for that next video, and all that fun. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video, and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday, and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists, so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject, we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.